السلام علیکم خاتون حضرات میں ہوں اسرا احمد کسانہ جس میں نے آپ کو پہلے اناؤنس کیا تھا کہ آج ہم لوگ بات کریں گے ہماری البرٹا کی ایک بہت ہی اچھی منسٹر لیلا شہرن ہائی ہیر صاحبہ سے اور ان سے پوچھیں گے کہ وہ اور ان کی منسٹری جو ہے جو کلچر اور ملٹی کلچرلزم اور اسٹیٹس آف ویمن پہ ہے وہ کیا کر رہے ہیں اور اس حوالے سے ان کی کیا پالیسیز چل رہی ہیں اس کا سارا تجزیہ کرنے کی کوشش کریں گے اینڈ لیٹ می انٹروڈیوس یو ٹو لیلا جی لیلا جی تھینک یو ویری مچ فار یور ٹائم تھینک یو ویری مچ اینڈ آئی ریلی اپریشیٹ یو بیکاز یو آر ویری بزی اینڈ آئی تھنک آئی ہیو سین مینی پالیٹیشینز ان مائی لائف بٹ دا وے یو آر کنڈکٹنگ یور سیلف اٹس امیزنگ اینڈ انکریڈیبل تھینک یو ویری مچ فار یور ٹائم Thank you, Kasana Ji. The privilege is truly mine to be with you. I, I'm more than honored. And I also want to thank you. Um, we know the work that you do. I think many people are very aware of your contributions yourself and the work that you do with the new Canadians and um, also just your volunteer work and what you do in the community and also on Omni, the privilege that we have of sharing information as government, but it really, it's your voice that comes over the airwaves that translates to our communities to help them understand, especially through COVID, how difficult this has been. Yes, Not yes. And with our families or gathering in faith organizations, um, folks like yourself, Kasana Ji, are our link to our families and to our homelands and to understanding. Thank you so much for everything you do for our community. No, thank you very much. And uh, it's actually a pleasure for me and for my viewers as well. And let me introduce you formally. Uh, viewers leela is basically a minister for culture multiculturalism and status of women and also sports and francophonic uh, secretariat and then she is also uh, an mla from chestermere strathmore uh, and she has a wonderful business experience as well she has been ceo of slam industries uh, joint owner of west creek uh, auto wash she has been a treasurer private investment company uh, she has been partner of chestermere health center building and lead artist she 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 loves music okay. and she's she 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 has a company uh, which is uh, Min- minvera and then she has a music studio uh, she has been operating that studio also primarily providing voice training and theory and music education and songwriting and what not and then she has been president vice president of gas station and a convenience store as well and then she has been teaching french and spanish this is unbelievable <laughs> and uh, music and drama instructor and aerobics and aerobics my god and then you know uh, she has a wonderful educational career as well she has been um, studying at university of calgary three years of political science three years of music university of manitoba for two years of music mount royal college two years of music and psychology and and then on top of everything she is a wonderful volunteer and a fundraiser she is very proud that she averages more than 550 volunteer events per year and she has been awarded chestermere's 2013 volunteer of the year award as well so let me tell you we have today with us an incredible person thank you very much leela ji thank you very much well, kasana ji that's probably the most beautiful introduction i think i've ever heard of. i'm actually <laughs> very touched and very overwhelmed and Um, one of the most beautiful things about being a musician is actually learning languages. So yes. I, I speak French fluently. I'm actually taking Hindi lessons right now. So that my, <laughs> you yeah, should. I am, you should. I'm going to try some out on you a little bit later and make sure I'm doing good. My, my uh, teacher is always pushing me to, to push myself. And actually, I understood everything you said in Hindi in the opening. So I think <laughs> I'm slowly better. But and I'm, also I'm, Punjabi because your husband is Punjabi. Uh, no but gradually you will learn it in short that's true yeah so so uh, but lila ji uh, this is amazing uh, i think people like you who, who bring a diverse background into the politics this is this is amazing for the for the political landscape of this country Well, in uh, Baji, like just so I think people need to understand also that those of us who have the privilege of being here, this yeah. is one of the most humble positions that one can hold. Um, yeah. Premier Kenny always talks about uh, servant leadership, and yeah. it's a collaboration between 
the folks that we represent, the leaders in our communities, and those of us who get to represent up here. And having that ability to have honest and, and very lovely conversations with the people that we represent and reaching out into our communities and making sure you, you need to see yourself reflected in the yeah. people representing you, no matter what side of the spectrum, no matter what your ideology, whatever it is, we need to see ourselves reflected in our public service, in our politics, in our CEOs, in our companies, in all of those things. And as a Southeast Asian woman, I find it to be such a huge privilege. And of course, I have my sister, Rajan Sani here as well, too, yeah. as the Community and Social Services. The two of yeah. us, and, and of course, Josephine Pan, who is also um, from China originally, from Hong Kong, you know, yeah. we have this immense ability to be able to bring a woman's perspective into this, but mm -hmm. also, self, you know, an Asian woman's perspective and a huge responsibility with that because women are 51% of our population, Kasana. Absolutely. And it's so imperative that our voices are reflected here. And I'm very, very honored to be part of um, on, on all sides, we have a very, very wonderful group of people um, yeah. that are so deeply about this province. And you've seen that throughout the COVID experience. Yeah. And I think one of the most important things that I've learned through COVID, Faji, is that um, those connections and reaching out to people and having constant connection with our, whether that's our constituents, our friends, our family, um, the organizations and partners that we have through government, it's been mm -hmm. very important, profoundly has impacted all of us. Yes. You know? But I don't know about you, but I find that my work days are even longer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's the drawback of it. You just do one after another. And people are yeah. happy. You have to eat and you have to. <laughs> <laughs> that's the flip side of it. Yeah. <laughs> It didn't slow down. Let's put it that yeah, way. Yeah. But, no, but let me let me let me congratulate you and the and the Alberta government also because uh, COVID cases are going down, uh, the hospitalization rate is going down. So I think the policies which you pursued from the very beginning and from the very outset, uh, I think they have paid back. And uh, the people actually they also need to be congratulated because they cooperated with you, and now we are at a stage that we we can control and. Uh, and we are going to have a relaunch strategy part two from day after tomorrow. So what, what are your expectations from it? Well, Kasanaji, I'd like to also back you up on that. Um, thank you for giving us credit as government. We're very honored to have um, AHS and the health department, but also Dr. Dina Hinshaw, who is a true hero to all of us. The way oh, yes, do. yes. But the true heroes in this are Albertans. And Absolutely. Did. There's been so much sacrifice on behalf of our small businesses and organizations, um, mm -hmm. especially for me, you know, in, in the sectors that I represent. These are super spreader events with large organizations that have a lot of people sitting in events. And so they've had to cancel absolutely everything. So you can imagine the difficulty that is had. So the fact that phase two is moving so much faster for me, it can't open fast enough, although with all of the things being equal, washing your hands, keeping two meters distance. Please, yes. wear, you know, you know, it's interesting. If you look at other countries that have done well through COVID, one of the things they do on a regular basis is they wear masks. And I, yes. and you don't even have to have a, a medical mask or anything. You can use a bandana, anything that stops your water anything. from yeah. transferring to somebody else. I, I'm a firm believer in those masks. I, I think we should wear them as much as possible, especially as we open, because yeah. we want stigma and the fear of. COVID. COVID to the reason we need to think about it is to remember that Dr. Dina Hinshaw always says, Kasanaji, that what you're doing is, is how are you protecting those that you love, right? Absolutely. Many Southeast East Asian culture live in multi-generational families and with a lot of people in one house sometimes too. I know that's yeah. where I grew up. You know, we had all of our generations living together. We have to protect our loved ones. The best way to do that is to protect ourselves. But Absolutely. we need to relaunch the economy. We need to get people back to work. We have to find a way to be able to manage the evil of COVID with mm. the real need to live life. So congratulations to everyone for the work. And now the real work week begins because now we have to go back to life and we have to Absolutely. figure out how to be able to do it in a safe way. Absolutely, you're right. And uh, how did actually 
COVID impact you personally and your ministry as well? Because obviously you've been uh, interacting with different people. The whole culture has changed over the last couple of months, right? Yes, you're correct. For me personally, um, Kasanaji, I'm a hugger. I hug everyone. This has had a really <laughs> tremendous personal. I, I know that. I know that. Yeah. And so, because you, you you basically connect with people and you're, you're so nice and uh, people actually get attracted to you because of your demeanor and your gestures. Well, and I'm very attracted to people as well, too. And I love people and I love that close interaction, those personal relationships that we build. Absolutely. So that's that's been hard. And I know a lot of people are having trouble with that. Um, but in the sectors that I have the privilege of running, so if you look at you know, um, at the arts, at sports, at all of the organizations. So, you know, just this, for example, Paji, just to give you an idea, we yeah. have National Indigenous History Month, Pride Month, the Philippine Heritage Month, Italian Heritage Month, Parks and Rec Month, all of these normally, we would be out promoting, getting people together, standing around, raising flags, having wonderful declarations of beautiful, mm. beautiful, look at Vasaki, 40,000. Oh, yeah normally will come into the streets and celebrate together or Ramadan. We just, you know, our iftars, everything changed, right? And all of that had such... By the way, by the way, Leela Ji, uh, the, the, the way you conducted that iftar party uh, by the UCP, that was amazing. And I, I was part of it and I loved it. Oh, thank you. I Those events for me, you know, what I've always said, uh, Kasana Ji, is that one of the things about being in government is that the, this room that I'm in right now, this is in the legislature. This is your yeah. house. The federal building is your house. McDougal is your house. I want to fling open the doors of your house so our families can come to our house together. Beautiful. There's a reason Beautiful. we call it our house. Um, right now we're having to do it like this on Zoom. But I, I, it is an absolute imperative for me, especially if you think about all the new Canadians that come here. Some of them come from situations where government and police, everything, there's so much un, you know, distrust. Of yeah. people. We want to fling open those doors and say to the very newest Canadian or, or, or our Indigenous people who've been here for thousands of years before us, that this is our house and collectively together here. We do yeah. this as a family. And so... You know, for us, these events that we've been throwing over the last year have connected us in ways to community I can't even imagine. And the Zoom has actually been really interesting because we've had even a further reach through this mechanism. And then yeah. we also, did you know that we have the 52nd anniversary of the Alberta flag? Um, of course, D-Day and Philippines Independence Day, which is a very, very uh, special event, is on June 12th. Um, yeah. Of course, you know of this, of the, the martyrdom of Guru Arjan. The, you yeah. know, uh, Guru, uh, World yeah. Refugee Day. I'm sure uh, this is something we would have normally done with in collaboration with the newcomers. Um, National Indigenous Peoples Day, Saint Jean Baptiste Day, huge celebration Beautiful. for our, our French culture and our Franco Albertans, and um, Multiculturalism Day. And normally in September, we would have had culture days. That's kind of like my stampede. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We go out. Well, yeah. Last year, I was absolutely in every corner of the province over the weekend. It was absolutely, what's the word I want to be? I don't even know how we managed it. We were just driving out. But it was so beautiful to go to these small little communities to see how they're bringing culture together. Like if we look what has happened recently, Paji, with Black Lives Matter, with seeing this amazing change in culture around our world right now, standing up against racism. Of what course amazing opportunity within that multicultural premise is the opportunity to take anti-racism to the next level to make Absolutely. sure none of us ever ever feel it is it is never okay for any human being ever to feel like there are barriers to their success or their inability to get ahead in life or to work or to have equal pay or any of these things yeah the importance of these things to be able to illuminate those at a time like this has never been more important and yourself, myself, all of us from our different cultures stand in solidarity with our Black communities right now, making sure that they understand fully how much we love and appreciate these folks as, you know, as the contributions. But at yeah. the same time, it highlights contributions of culture generally, the beautiful tapestry. One of the things that we did for Black History Month, Faji, is that we released a video about Amber Valley and the history of... Mm -hmm. 
black Canadians and how they came here and what they went through. It's a beautiful story, yeah. but not people knew about that. Did you know that Punjabi settlers have been here almost as long as any of the other settlers, that they started some of the main work here in this province? You know, you, of course, know that the very first mosque was built in Edmonton. Edmonton, yeah. Or the Sheep Mosque. Yes, with, with you Ukrainians and Christians and other organizations that actually helped build that mosque. Back yeah. before it was even a mosque here, and then the second one being in Lac La Biche. You know, yeah. these yeah. are beautiful stories, and we have to take a time right now to reflect on how we got here and what we need to do to improve to make sure that the experience that all Canadians feel is that one of acceptance and love and safety. It is. No so I'm very glad. I'm very glad, Lilaji, you brought it up. And uh, as you said, racism is not acceptable. And but you know, it's some. Sometimes we see the systemic racism, anti-black and anti-minorities racism, which is in system. And I, I'm I'm very glad that I I was reading your uh, joint statement from Alberta's anti-racism advisory council co-chairs. And as you mentioned that uh, it, it said, and let me quote, Alberta is a rich tapestry of cultural diversity and a beautiful place where people of all backgrounds must feel loved and accepted. So Leela Ji, this is very important for people who, who belong to the minorities, especially the visible minorities. Yes. So we have to, on the part of the government, we have to make them feel comfortable and reassure them that you are part of the society. This, yes. I think this is a very important initiative. Oh, and you know, truthfully, the the the, mo the most important important work that we need to do right now is that what you see, people standing with each other, acknowledging yeah. the barriers, acknowledging the concerns that we have right now mm -hmm. for visible minorities, for the LGBTQ2S plus community, for anybody who feels that they're on the margins of society. There should never be a question ever of a person's vital necessity to be here in our province, our country, and in our world. Absolutely. You, I, and others who are at the front of this have an absolute responsibility to looking at that institutional racism, to find out why is it still occurring. And really, it comes from a collective movement of people. That's been one of the most astonishing things is seeing the the way that folks have come together to support a community and i see you know to quite be quite honest i see i'm very blessed i see this over and over and over again but i've this outpouring of love to our black brothers and sisters has been overwhelming and i hope that that love and that desire to be inclusive continues mm -hmm. on absolutely every piece and fabric of our culture because if one person is not safe body none of us are None, None of, of us. us. We have to see ourselves reflected in the black community right now to understand yeah. truly that if we are part of the problem, we, we, we actually incite that racism. We have to acknowledge the evil of racism. We have to say no loud. It, it, it's, like, it's like pulling a demon out of the, the society. Like we can't allow it to rest there. We have to shine big bright lights on it. The sad part about this is to have, you know, tragedy trigger. Absolutely this level of, of understanding and appreciation of a culture that completely deserves to be honored within yeah. our But what it That's teaches true. us is that every single day, the beautiful thing about when, when you talk about anti-racism is that if you think about that all the time, if it's part of your lens, a part yeah. of how you approach every day, you don't have to think about it. It's there. Everything you do, you get rid of your unconscious bias. You look at people because based on their capacity and who they are as human beings and their compassion and their contributions yeah. to society as a whole. It changes the way you look at things and it has to be a part. Premier Kenny was the uh, multicultural minister for 10 years at the federal level and probably yeah. welcomed more new Canadians to this country than anyone. And one thing he always says is that that piece of understanding every single day, the, the every single day of what a person goes through and trying to understand one of the things you, you would have seen in our platform, uh, Kasana G, was that we wanted to make sure that those professional designations were honored. It's right. not the, the job force, the economy, of course, being an absolute priority, but understanding mentally and as a person to not be recognized for the work that you're doing, you're asked to come to Canada, we want you to come here. We want your talent, your brilliance, and all of these things. And then to not recognize your professional designation, yeah. to 
person who's done the work to become this particular profession and then to not be recognized in a country that supposedly wants you, it's, it's ludicrous. It, it absolutely leads us to situations where people are not feeling honored or respected and putting up barriers to their success. It goes completely contrary to the growth that we need to see happen here in Canada. So yes. an absolute priority for us. I'm very honored to be part of the Anti-Racism Council. I'm a co-chair, so I, I, you know, we have many, many different members of our communities that participate in this. But more than that, the world needs to be part of the anti-racism movement. All of absolutely. us. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and at the same time, promoting the absolute imperative of culture and multiculturalism to have that lens at all times so that... For example, if you are looking at hiring and changing the culture of your business, that that's part of your norm, that's part of your lens as you look at the culture of your business and how you run your businesses, right. that the people that are in your businesses reflect the communities that you're you're working with, right? You work you you work at you know at Catholic Family Services and those organizations. You're working with a lot of different people all the time, Paji. You know how important it is that people see themselves in you, right? Yeah. And Absolutely. If there's one thing that I believe that we can accomplish collaboratively here, regardless of ideology, is that deeper love and sense of belonging that is, I believe, part of the Alberta experience. My dad came in 1963. He's Southeast Asian from south part of India. He has yeah. beautiful chocolate-covered skin, something I've always just loved about him. And I, I look at this man that came here all by himself and fell in love with Canadians and Canada and my a, la a little lady, uh, her name was Pansy. She sort of adopted my dad literally when he got off the airplane. This little, little Caucasian woman, you know, and she just embraced him as a son. And she, I called her Grandma Pansy my whole life. And she introduced my dad to what she, what was Canadian culture for her at that time. Bought him his first pair of snow boots, got him a winter coat. I mean, he was just shocked. I mean, he walked off the airplane to minus 40 coming from South India, right? And his first memories was that I landed in God's land. I landed with people who loved me instantly the minute I walked off that airplane. And he yeah. was held at such high regard because of the, he's such a beautiful human being too, but he just embraced the mm. one of this country and we embraced him. I want that. I this, want is, this is the beauty. That's the beauty. I, I yeah. want people, I want them to have the experience my dad had. And my mm. dad raised me to be a huge patriot. And my mom, who is Caucasian, taught me everything about East Indian culture. Everything. How to put on, how to cook South Indian food. She was a single and only child. My dad comes from a family of 11. My mom literally embraced the Indian culture like it was her own, dressed in saris, completely. Like when we went to India, she just fit right in with our family. It was never a question that mm. I was half Caucasian and half Southeast Asian. And I actually didn't know my dad even had color until somebody pointed it out to me in grade seven. I, I was literally shocked because <laughs> I didn't know, right? <laughs> so, you know, these are my beautiful experiences, but I could tell you a ton of experiences of racism as well, too. It is, it is prevalent. By, by not acknowledging it, you're part of the problem. Yes, right? absolutely. Yeah. You're right. So there's absolutely no, there are no, there's no way that we- No can, denying the fact. We can't hide from it. We, in fact, call it out, call it out loud and do yes. not settle into our, into our communities. Um, we have a tremendous amount of programs here. Some of them are on hold right now because of COVID, because we put our dollars into making sure that we're helping um, COVID yeah. vulnerable people. So we've moved into sort of into that space right now. But once those grants are back up and running, once we're allowed to do programs again, hmm. we have a MIG grant. It's the Multicultural Indigenous and Inclusion Grant. And that grant is specifically directed towards making sure communities are building capacity to understand each other and bring our wonderful diverse communities together to celebrate this tapestry, to celebrate that, and also to call out racism, call it out. There's call it out for it. Absolutely. And uh, you, you briefly mentioned about different initiatives your ministry has uh, undertaken, but let me um, go back to the, the ministry's <clears throat> basic, uh, you know, primer, which is uh, to build a vibrant cultural sector, 
by supporting the development and sustainability of Alberta's different sectors, including creative and cultural industries, artists and art, arts community, uh, then recreation of and, and supports, and then nonprofit and voluntary sector. How, how are you managing all that uh, in this ministry? And are you doing everything possible during this COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic as well? Well, I have to tell you, Paji, um, I have a small but mighty team here. Um, I have young mothers that work in this office that have young children who are mm -hmm. more invested in this province, as you can imagine, because their future of their children are what is important. I have two young men who work in my office who are rock stars. And then mm -hmm. I'm a ministry that is extremely supportive and a premier who cares so deeply about this portfolio. So a couple of things that have happened and um, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about, but truly I, I, I can't take any credit for this. This is really directed by a lot of the partners that we have mm -hmm. along with our associations that work together and collaboratively. I'll start sort of at more of the, the not-for-profit side of things. So what we decided to do once COVID happened, Paji, is that we wanted to move some dollars to try and help the organizations that are working with COVID response right at the beginning of COVID. So we took $2 million and we put it at up and we had the United Ways and other organizations across Alberta help yeah. fundraise with us. So out of that $2 million, we've actually raised $6 million so far to go towards COVID frontline help for our vulnerable population. That's amazing. Well, and, and again, this is Albertans. This is people mm. right now who are working, who are finding discretionary dollars to put towards helping. Yeah. That's about Albertans. We are, this is the most generous province ever. And even under these circumstances, people are finding money to donate towards very worthy causes such as this. We also started the Volunteer Connect, which is um, powered by Propellus. So what mm -hmm. we have found is that um, our seniors are, of course, a huge part of our volunteer corps, but also we're some of the most vulnerable during COVID and we wanted to protect them. So we really put out a call for volunteers. And what we did with Propellus is that there was an ability to, to um, find, if you live in a certain area, you can type in your area and the things that you're interested in and that would connect you with a volunteer organization. We found right. had more volunteers than we knew what we to do with. I think there was 16,000 almost immediately that mm -hmm. went into all of this in order to make sure that we had the volunteers available to help out with COVID. And that's on top of other organizations that are already doing this great work. So, and then um, we also looked at, we moved a lot of our dollars um, in the uh, community initiatives programs into operations to help uh, nonprofits, community organizations, and all of those right now that have zero profit coming in because casinos are shut down. You can't, yeah. find, you know, the stampede is shut down. The stampede promotes uh, thousands and thousands of nonprofits. A lot of them make their year ends at this time when they're having stampede breakfasts and all these kinds of things. So we needed to find a way to be able to help these organizations keep their heads above water through COVID. So we transferred some of those dollars just temporarily to help those organizations uh, over the next little while. So it was, it's just wonderful, but this has come as a result of a humongous amount of consultation with mm -hmm. these organizations. So you know how I was saying that you have to stay connected? You can imagine like the, the organizations that we have in this portfolio, like we're small, but mighty. We, we deal with absolutely every <laughs> Albert and it's wonderful, but we were I happy. Round table meetings, sometimes six or seven a day. And then the larger town halls, I think I've done 17 of those in seven different languages to make sure that all of our communities, plus we do everything in seven languages here. Plus on top of that, we saw an increase in um, our, we have a thing called the one line, which is for sexual assault, domestic violence. And yeah. what we found is in Canada, a lot, a lot, because people, we were asking people to stay home. But it's not always safe for, for, for people to stay home because if they are in these situations of domestic violence and sexual assault, where yeah. do they go, right? So we made sure that there was dollars going to our shelters and uh, right into the frontline services to help those. But because of the one line, it's a text chat and phone line, we yeah. actually saw a 57% increased usage of that line because it's safe to use. And so we're actually looking, we're trying to come up with a national strategy against domestic violence and sexual assault. And it might be one of the things that the federal level will look at as incorporating because we didn't have a cliff at all. We actually yeah. thought it would be used, which is what we need because quite often um, if a vulnerable person, especially women and girls, if they're in a situation like that, they'll tell a family member or a friend, but they don't always engage with the services that are available, which we, we have a lot of amazing associations here in Alberta to help out with that. Yeah. Um, we also want to see, we started a program called Spotlight 
um, yesterday, uh, which is going to promote local artists, local musicians. So they're going to Beautiful. be with, um, with uh, Mr. Mosker at, at the uh, Cal Studio Bell and also with CKUA and then Stagehand. So these three organizations, we're putting some money together to pay musicians to play live stream. And then it starts on June 11th, I think at 4.30 p.m. And so what happens is that you can listen. These are some amazing musicians, but you listen to the musicians and then you can tip them as well too on that set. So Very we'll, good. we'll pay them as well to get them going because gig artists and musicians and RN sports, people who are in sports um, organizations, are still going to be impacted for a long time out because we really don't know when it's going to be safe to have large, like our Jubilee Auditoria, for example, to make sure that it's safe for people to sit and go to concerts and musical theater or, you know, the Ragamala Society, right, that has these beautiful concerts of, you know, Bhattanatyam and the dances and the, you know, the top love players that come in. We, we all squish in to watch those concerts. We just don't know when it's going to be safe to do those. So or, are, are, are you going to play some music or sing uh, any songs there too? Um, I, I don't know if I'll be on that one, but I'm actually singing on Friday in Tagalog for oh, really? a show event. Yes, they sent me a song that they wanted me to sing. So I'm in their event, I think, at 4.30 on Friday. Um, and I'll be singing at Marlboro Mall in uh, this beautiful, beautiful song called Sahil, or Dahil Sayo. It's a beautiful song about love and relationships that they asked me to sing. So I'll be singing in Tagal Tagalog for my very first time. So maybe maybe we can we can live telecast it. Uh, <laughs> I'll get. I think. I'll get my press secretary Michael to uh, inform you and see if we can hook you up with these wonderful folks that are running this organization. But yeah, why not? I love to. I've sung in Bengali and Hindi and Telugu and Sanskrit. Like I love singing in those languages. So maybe maybe next time next time uh, Lila when uh, you are with us, maybe you can uh, prepare a song in Hindi for us and for I us uh, viewers. Have would love to do that. Sold. <laughs> it's it's a date for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. So coming back to your work, and you just mentioned about the domestic violence and uh, sexual assault, and I know for the fact that during this COVID thing, you know, the numbers of domestic violence have gone up. Mm -hmm. And child abuse. What what are you doing about it? And because the, the other thing which is very important is that a lot of people don't even report domestic violence. So that is very important to create awareness among the community so that if, if there is a case about domestic violence, they must report. Well, and that's so there's there's two there's a couple of things that are really concerning right now. Um, and I have to give a shout out to Minister Sani and Minister Schweitzer and Minister Schultz as well, too. So that's Children's Services, Justice and yeah. uh, Services and also Minister Luan, who's put fifty three million dollars towards uh, mental health and addictions. So cross ministry, we're working together to make sure that dollars are going to the places that are needed right now in those front lines. So we made sure uh, Minister Sani put an extra $60 million into civil service, or sorry, into, into um, civil society to make sure that those dollars were going to be available. Uh, food banks, food security was a huge issue. So we wanted to make sure, so we talked to a lot of the folks on our, our grassroots organizations to find out uh, what, what, where we were best positioned to be able to help out in those organizations. So that's, there's so many programs, uh, Padu, it would take me an hour to, to sort of list them all. But one of the most important things that is, is necessary is to be able to have the connections in the communities with the grassroots organizations that are doing this great work. Um, government is a partner in all of this. So we partner with as many organizations as we can because those grassroots organizations are much more effective than anything I could ever do in government. So we want to make sure that those partnerships are there, as you know, because we work in partnership with a lot of the organizations that you also Absolutely. represent. And so, but one of the other things I wanted to talk about too is that children in school, I mean, aside from the absolute importance of going to school, it's also another checkpoint for child well being. A mm. huge concern for us has been how our kids are doing because kids who are in abusive situations or yeah. concerned situations do not have teachers seeing what is going on every single day. It's a whole piece of the puzzle that is missing from our ability to be able to help out and intervene in situations that are very serious because as you know, teachers yeah. have a care to their children over and above their education. So if there are concerns of abuse or um, families um, not ha having some major issues, whether that's socioeconomic, uh, concerns over food security, all of these kinds of things, the teachers are a lot of the front line work that helps give us insight as to work and help that needs to happen. 
there's a lot of kids at home right now that we don't even know how they're doing. And there's going to be a lot of, we'll be shining a lot of lights on what has happened as we debrief, as we come out of COVID to find out what supports are going to be needed to be able to help out in those particular situations. So we work with this, like I, like I said, the work that we're doing right now, especially through Zoom has been very profound because we're, we're, we're getting a lot of insight and we're doing our very best right now to leverage supports to the best of our ability. And um, right. I, it's very, it's not, um, it's not a, this is not, these aren't partisan issues. These are things that we just have to work on to collaborate together. And it's the expectation of people in this province that their government is going to be there and be available to them to make yeah. sure. That's the and, 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 and Liliji, uh, talking about the women, status of women, because that is part of your portfolio. Uh, actually, uh, I know that for the fact that Alberta has the largest number of women entrepreneurs in the country. Yes. So what I was thinking is, how are you planning to further enhance that number, further grow that number? So one of the things, if you if you think about when you're starting a business, there's a couple of things that are important, but women are 51% of the population. Yes. And we're also very positioned right now to come back into this market. So there's a couple of different things. Um, one of the most important things for, I mean, any entrepreneur really, but it, when we're talking about women specifically, there are so many organizations in the province. The reason why entrepreneurs have done well is because they're self-motivated. And there's, a, there's an environment for growth. Mm -hmm. Alberta is this welcoming, wonderful environment that supports great ideas. So if you have a market idea, if you have the accessibility, if you understand how to do that, and you have organizations like um, Alberta, Women, uh, Alberta um, Women's Entrepreneurs, who have grants up to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars that are pay you know payback loans to get your businesses started. ATB has particular groups, which of course works with in collaboration with government specifically to help women grow their organizations. But more than that, status of women is actually a, it's it's a ministry of collaboration. Mm -hmm. It's not about elevating one over the other. This is about acknowledging the need to make sure that we as a society reflect all of the people that are in society right across the board whether that is an indigenous minorities or other minorities or lgbtq2s plus women any gen like all the the importance of the status of women is acknowledging that together we are way more powerful and that when we get rid of the idea that it has to look and feel a certain way versus actually looking at the competencies of what people have women in alberta we're, we are so far ahead of the curve. I think the national average of women entrepreneurs out of 163 women in other provinces. Yeah. So just to give you, and, but that largely in part, it's because women are motivated. If you think about it, I, I, I've owned my own businesses my whole life. Why? Because it was flexible. I was able to invest my dollars. I took all of the risk, all of my own dollars. I also wanted a family. So I was able to work my business around my family and my husband and I did that collaboratively together. We have several businesses that we have together. Um, poor guy, he's had to take over all my businesses now because I'm here. But you know, like the, the thing was, is that it never, it should never be a barrier. Gender is actually a gift. <laughs> and if we can highlight the gifts of what we have, and, you know, men are going to have certain gifts and certain things and women are going to have certain gifts. And let's highlight those and use them to our advantage. What are yeah. our strengths and how do we bring that together? And particularly, Faji, and in our, in our culture, the men in our culture are going to be the highlight of women in our culture. Absolutely. It's going to be the men that are in equal partners that say to their Southeast Asian partners and women and daughters, Yes, you can do that. I'm going to invest in you. I'm going to help you get your first loan. We're going to go out and do that. And you're going to start a business. Very and good. have that independence and that strength of character that we know that we have. I mean, the intelligence levels and the people, it's unbelievable the gifts and talent that we have if we're willing to put in the time and energy to do that. So government is a great partner in being able to promote that. Um, again, within the grants, the mid grants that I was talking about, um, we don't have business grants per se, but we have grants that help to elevate the course of action that is happening in order to make sure communities are really supporting each other. Baji, the best thing we can do is highlight local businesses and say, you know what, that business is awesome. This is why these are the people that they have there. Let's highlight the businesses that are doing things the right way. Absolutely. Right? You and mentioned about the grants, uh, Leelaji. Uh, are you still providing grants to the film industry and, and the media in Alberta? Because I heard that some of the companies are moving to BC. 
Well, it's interesting. Like, well, one thing about the film industry, Paddy, is very mobile. And um, good for them. Like, I mean, really, the work is all over the place. And BC has a really bustling uh, film industry. We are trying to grow ours here. It just takes a little bit of time. Um, we have uh, right now approximately $45 million per year that is invested into that industry. Uh, it's more in the um, economic development, trade and tourism. Now, it used to be in my ministry, but we actually started a separate small Alberta-made grant program specifically for film and documentaries because we got so much homegrown talent here. And yeah. so we want to make sure and promote that as much as possible. And it's definitely like, we have to look at the opportunities to really grow these industries. Part of that though, Faji, isn't just growing the industry here. It's actually pulling in. We have to make sure that we're open for business and that other countries are actually filming here. Not just because of our beautiful vistas. We have the most beautiful province with our mountains. Absolutely. There, but Absolutely. Also and mortar opportunities to do all of the production and everything that is possible here. So we're working with those stakeholders all the time to find out how best to do that. The biggest problem we have right now is that um, is the travel restrictions because like any arts organizations or sports organizations, we are 4.3 million people here in this province that are staying put right now. So yeah. right now what we need to do with our arts organizations and everything is really, really work on our homegrown art and our homegrown organizations. We have a, a piece of legislation that will come forward here in the future called the Arts Profession Act, specifically dedicated to honoring and valuing the value of art. Art is work. So we want to make sure that artists in the garden, like if we're hiring somebody or if we're looking to that, that we're paying them well. That, they, that they're valued for their work that they do and lead by example so that if you're hiring a company, for example, to come in and a group or a band to come in and play yeah. them their value and their worth for the work that they're doing. So I think it starts with us. We have to lead by example that way. Sports organizations, we're working very closely with all of the orgs, whether that's rec or elite sport, to make sure that our, our athletes and our Sports organizations and rec organizations have as much of support as we can, leveraging the dollars that we have. As you know, um, we started off before COVID in a massive fiscal crisis. So mm -hmm. we're taking the dollars that we have, Paji, there's no, I mean, we haven't made any bones about it. There's, there's severe fiscal crisis that we have, but we're mm -hmm. going to leverage the dollars that we have and work in partnership with creative partnerships throughout the province, to the best of our ability to leverage the dollars that we have to help out in whatever way we can. But I'd be lying to you if I was saying the dollars are free flowing. They're not. We are yeah. limited by what we have. And then on top of that, we have people who aren't working right now. We have a downturn in our economy and then the absolute destruction of our natural resource economy, which all of us have to work to build up and make sure that the world understands that Alberta is the most reliable, green, clean energy in the world, bar none. It's an absolute responsibility of our province and our country to uphold that. Because the energy sector, the agriculture sector, the manufacturing sector, private sector, uh, and our wonderful um, grad, like small businesses are the reason why arts, sports, and all of these things that make our lives beautiful function here. So yeah. we're all intertwined. If one is failing, the others cannot live. So let's make sure that collaboratively we look fundamentally at how it is that we bring business into this province, that we acknowledge and honor the industries that grow this province and make a meaningful contribution to our entire country that cannot be dropped there. I cannot emphasize that enough. The meaningful contribution that Alberta makes to Confederation and to the economy of Canada cannot be yeah. understood. And everything that everybody does in this country is a result of work that is done in Alberta and other provinces, but Alberta, it, it, is, it is absolutely imperative that this province is elevated and that we can get our products to Tidewater and that we become a part of the global economy. As far as energy, if you look to India, what is one of their major issues? Energy poverty. We could change that overnight if we were allowed to get our products over there. China, yeah. all of these, you want to pull people out of poverty? Make sure they have access to these things. It is an absolute necessity. I can't begin to explain how important this is. Um, money doesn't grow on trees. I wish it did. And so we have to look very closely at our fiscal ability and how we manage those dollars. I'm absolutely committed to that. But at the same time, we have vulnerable populations that absolutely and desperately need our help right now. So we'll leverage our dollars wherever we can. And we're here always to answer as many questions as we want. But it's going to take all of us to do this together. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Lila Ji, uh, finally, I, I know you have a meeting to go. And uh, you just can you tell me about how how much energy you have? I, I, I cannot believe it. And sometimes I, I, I wish that uh, I have that secret 
uh, how do you get this immense energy from and how, where you get this energy from? Uh, what makes you, you know, connect with the people, how you go there, how you meet with the people and hundreds of people every day. So this energy comes from where? What is your inspiration? Honestly, Paji, my energy is because I reflect the people that I meet. I, I don't do it on my own. You know as much as I do that we are part of an energy that is fed to us by the people that we are surrounded by. I am surrounded by Albertans. I'm surrounded by some of the best people in the world that come from every culture, every corner, every socioeconomic, every background. And I'm constantly, constantly surprised and inspired. Um, there's a lot of people that would try and be negative and to try and change um, the, maybe the way that I would look at the world. But to tell you the truth, I can't imagine being anywhere else. And if I have the privilege to be here, I'm going to do everything I can in my power while I'm here to try and make a difference and to try and elevate people. It's not about me at all. It never has been. I'm a public servant. If you look at the pyramid, I'm, at the, I'm in the foundation part at the bottom. And on my shoulders is where everybody stands. My responsibility is to help be part of that fundamental piece that holds people up. And when yeah. I'm given that energy from other people, I just, it, it just comes out in a million different ways. And if, if you are seeing in that in me, um, I can't take any credit for it because it's what you've given me today. Wonderful. And uh, finally, also, again, final question. What about your family? You have beautiful sons. <laughs> They are wonderful, but let me uh, share that story with the audience as well, because I, I want you to, to tell the people that how the family is important, how family makes a difference in your life. Um, this is, it's hard not to get emotional about this. Um, my, my husband is um, one of the best people I've ever met. And like any family, we've had our challenges. I don't know if you know this, but my husband is a recovering alcoholic. I know, and yeah. And he's been through so much and he fought. He fought for <clears throat> everything. He's fought to come back to us. And he's a Punjabi as well. Ah, yes. <laughs> he's one of the most beautiful people I've ever met. And as a result of that, my youngest son has autism. And um, we, you know, for some people that might have seen as a challenge, for me, it was just... This is my beautiful boy. God gave him to me this way. And I'm so proud to have been able to have this amazing human being that changed me as a parent, as a human being, I think made me a better person because he challenges me every day to look at the world from a very different perspective. My older son, who is the link and the rock in our family and yeah. all of the musicians. So I don't know if you've seen my Facebook, but we perform together regularly on our Yeah, Facebook. you do. You do. And my son he plays guitar too. Yeah, both of them play piano and guitar. <laughs> they sit with me at the ages of 21 and 23 around the piano still to sing songs to bring joy to the world. And both of them are volunteers and musicians and they give a lot back to their communities. And my husband as well too. He does a lot of work in addiction and mental health now as a result of his ability to overcome this horrible, evil disease. And yes. so I have to tell you that I'm surrounded by heroes all of the time. People Beautiful. who such a, an absolute imperative difference in my life every single day who constantly challenge me to look at things from a different perspective. And I'm grateful for that. Uh, I think it, it provides me with an extra bit of energy and desire to be a better human being overall and, and to be less judgmental and more understanding and to look at things from a less ideological perspective and look at them from the perspective of what, what is my responsibility here and how am I supposed to engage? And uh, my husband is... Um, He's uh, he constantly, he texts me like probably seven or eight times a day, just always telling me how proud he is of me and, and to keep going and that they miss me, but to do what I need to do. And I'm just, I have more than more gratitude. And my, my parents and my in-laws um, who call me regularly just to tell me that they love me. I, I just, I don't even know what to say. It's, um, and then the family that I've grown here at the legislature as well, too. These are my family members. These are people who know absolutely every detail about me, my ups and my downs, and they still love me, <laughs> regardless. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's with a tremendous humility. So I, I'm, I am probably the luckiest person I know. I don't take it for granted ever. I, I, I always assume that my job is up for grabs. I'm here as long as the people will allow me to sit in this place. Um, and for that, I'm eternally grateful to the people of Alberta. 
Thank you very much, uh, Leela Ji. I'm so proud of you and your ministry as well, and the government as well, because the way you are working hard and the way you have tackled this COVID thing, and then you became an inspiration for the community. And I, I think this is a great thing for the community and hats off to you. I wish you good luck. I wish you Godspeed. And uh, hopefully we will soon have you again and uh, we will talk about different things. And when I hope uh, very soon we'll be done with this COVID thing and we'll be, it, it, it will be over and we'll have, uh, you know, a beautiful concert for you. And then we can embrace. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we can embrace and uh, and we can have the, your Hindi song as well. I promise. I'll, have <laughs> ready. I'll bring my guitar. I'll be ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Ms. Leela. And uh, it was a pleasure. It was an honor to have you here. And uh, I think the, the community loves you. And the way you are really, you're working very hard for the community and hats off to you. Thank you very much for your time. And thank you for your uh, uh, support for the community and uh, during this COVID-19 thing. Thank you very much. Thank you. thank you, Kasana Ji. Much love to you and your family. Please take care. We'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Bye.